All right, so let's talk about how we can use the Axiomax policy server to provide external authorization for your applications. So what do we mean by external authorization? Well, we mean let's take all the authorization logic that's in the applications and externalize it out. And we externalize that into our authorization engines with a set of policies that describe all the conditions that must be met for users to see information, or we can even describe the conditions that deny them access. So what happens here, we introduce a notion of an enforcement point. An enforcement point can be a few lines of code um, within your applications that just make a call out to the authorization service and provide the authorization decisions back to the application. So a, a classic example of what an enforcement point can be is an API gateway. So you can imagine you've got a user working in your applications or got their browser open and they're executing the get record API. So in this case, if the enforcement point is an API gateway, it inspects that incoming URI, pulls out key information such as what's the API path, what are the query parameters, you know, which record are they looking for. It can pull out the user's identity, whether that's coming from you know, an authorization token or uh, authentication in the header, it can pull all that information out and build an authorization request to send to our authorization service. So in this case, it's gonna ask, can Alice view record 123? So it's gonna send in all those individual attributes. And when it gets to our authorization service, it's gonna evaluate that against the policies that are written. So for example, we have policies written that say users can view records in their own department. Well, the enforcement point didn't tell us what department Alice is in. It didn't tell us what department the record is assigned to. So how does our engine answer this question? Well, we bring in the notion of these attribute sources down here at the bottom. These are your own authoritative sources where you store the user's metadata, where you store your records, for example. So we can tell our authorization engine how to go connect to these sources and look up the information. So for the case of Alice's department, let's say you store that in your directory service, you know, for example, Active Directory. We can configure our engine to connect to your directory service and go get Al Alice's department. Maybe these records are in a database. So we can configure our engine to go connect to your data source and go look up the department column of that record. It could also be a web service. So a lot of companies now are using APIs everywhere. So our engine can make a call out to your service and retrieve that information back. This is what makes our system very dynamic. You know, the enforcement point doesn't need to know what the policies need to answer the question. It just provides the key information, user's identity, the identifier of the resource. And of course, what are they trying to do to it? You know view it, edit it, update, delete. And then the engine evaluates it against that policy. And in this case, if that's a match, you know, if Alice is in the same department as the record, you get a permit back. Um, we can do other policies as well. You know, maybe there's supervisors and managers that can view any record. Maybe it doesn't matter what department they're in. So we can have multiple policies describing all your authorization requirements on one service that can then be consumed by all your applications. And then your applications no longer need to have all this complex authorization logic and extra code code in them. Just frees up your developers to focus on your business code and not authorization because that's being, being taken care of by the authorization engine. This also makes it much more easier to audit uh, your authorization because now instead of having to potentially go through hundreds of applications reading thousands and thousands of lines of code to figure out if the authorization was implemented properly we can go to the authorization service and query the policies there they get a holistic view or if you will a, a single pane of authorization of your environment to find out what's going on so let's take a look at this in real life or in demo life, as we like to call it. So I mentioned that they, these enforcement points can be API gateways. So we have a little demo here set up with an API gateway and 
over on the right, you can see the ever-growing list of API gateway vendors. It seems there's a new one uh, every other week these days. So uh, this is just an example of a few of the API gateways that we have worked with. These integrations are typically very simple. Um, this is a few lines of configuration within the gateways. Um, for the example of, of, of MuleSoft, we did develop a connector that is available in their marketplace that you can pull in to your AnyPoint Studio and use it that way. So what the gateway does is, as it has API calls coming in from your customers and users, this is a, just a natural place to do inspection. So it can inspect the API paths coming in, bundle them up into an authorization request, send them to our server. It does its thing, analyzes the policies, gets the attributes as needed, and sends a response back. And if it's a permit, the gateway does its thing and just sends that out the back end to a service to be executed, then that service returns the data back to the user. So it's a very simple process. Um, API gateways are a great place to do authorization because it's already um, a point where all your data is flowing through. All your requests are already flowing through there and being expect, inspected and routed out. So it's, it's a great natural place to put authorization. You can really get your bang for your buck there, right? Instead of having to go out and put authorization across hundreds of applications, you can move it out a layer to the API gateway and provide authorization there. 